baddest motorcycle bracket racer out here on the west coast this weekend the one and only tyler anderson and his willy bar hayabusa and tyler that's the case more often than not because i remember you and i met a year and a half ago in arizona you doubled up man there was a tough field today but you just rolled right through it yeah it was a good race uh i was number two qualifier i had an 009 the guy other guy had a 006 but he was pushing it hard and uh he had a double O2 red, I think, in the semi, so I didn't have to face the, the number one qualifier, so I had a little luck on my side. Always and helps to have luck, that's for sure. Yeah, it's half of its luck for sure. Now, you're so consistent. Tell me a little bit about your setup on the Suzuki Hayabusa. We see a lot of no bar boosts. I see you got the wheelie bar boosts. Yeah, so this, uh, I just got an MTC single stage. MTC single stage, very Old cool. School Old deal. school. Uh, Thank you, Eric Hostetler. My foot shift. Foot shift. Why no foot air shift. shifter? I don't want to deal with things that break, right? And it's likely that those things break. I've won a lot of rounds with people having problems with their air shifters, and I, I, I learned how to ride the bike this way, you know, dirt bike racing. And I just hey, you're very consistent. The same thing. Yeah, thanks. What do you shift at? Uh, ten two. You got a light, or you watch the tack? I have a light. You have, I have a light. A, okay. Uh, I don't remember the brand right now, but there it is up in there. Okay. Yep. There's the shift light right there. Wow, that's remarkable. Foot shifting. Very cool. What Foot do you shift? No. No two-step, nothing. Okay. No electronics, all stock electronics. What uh, What do you leave at? What RPM? Uh, Seven thousand. Wow, 7, you're coming 000. off. You're coming off hot. Yeah. But you can do that with the wheelie bar, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. You just let it fly. And, you know, without the two-step, you've got to roll under the throttle real hard, and that's you know a little inconsistency that you really have there. But, sure. Yeah. Any other cool features on this bike that help you be so consistent? I see, look, you even keep the mirrors on, which is interesting. Is that help you see the competition? Oh yeah, well, you know, all the bracket cars got mirrors, right? And they have it on there for a reason, it helps you. You know, I watch, if I'm racing a faster bike, I'm watching to see where they're coming down the track. As I get to a thousand foot, I start looking around, see if someone's gonna drive around me. And, and uh, then I don't have to turn around, you know, you wanna be tucked to keep your mile an hour up to get be consistent. If you're not tucked, you won't be consistent. So. That helps me a lot. I don't have to get out of the wind stream by looking my, turning my head around. We got some folks on here taking notes, all the bracket racers. So I gotta ask you this, I know you don't wanna give away too much. If you could give away one of your best secrets, if there is a secret you could discuss that makes you so successful out here on the West Coast, what is really the key to this tough, challenging, arduous game that we know is bracket racing? All right, the biggest secret I have is the eight tacos between every round <laughs> and uh, guacamole. You know, good good Mexican American food. That's what, that's my secret. I would guess you're in such a rush to get to the restroom. That's why your lights are so good and you're so quick, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any any legitimate secrets you can pass on here? Um, you know, I, I record my pass mentally every time I make a pass because it's usually just me, nobody else telling me what's going on. I pay attention if the tires slip in or if I feel like I had a really good 60 foot, and then I I, I kind of record it all in my brain. And when I get back to my pit. I go right on my computer and I record every pass exactly and then what I think happened. And I, I, over time, I've gotten pretty good at it, you know. And an interesting strategy you told me you have, you don't like leaving too much ET in your pocket. You actually down, dial down a little bit, right? And run, yeah, yeah. It, run it all the way out. Yeah, I try to run as hard as I can in my time runs and see where I'm going to be. And then I try to dial maybe, you know, a hundredth underneath that so that I can just run it out the back door, you know. In Phoenix, I race a lot of you know slower bikes that are maybe two or three seconds slower, and it's too dangerous to be jamming your brakes or anything. I just want to drive past, you sure. know. And so I want to dial down and stay in it, you know. And then you know when you're racing faster bikes, it's it's better not to look around, you know. It's just safer, and I, I feel like I can be more consistent staying tucked on my bike. So that's my strategy, you know. Congratulations, did a great job. Let's take a look at this trophy. You you, you made a good point here. You said. You got a, you finally got a motorcycle in your trophy. Those are rare, right? You, you yeah, win yeah. a lot of car trophies. Yeah, you get, you know, racing the Summit Series, which is what I race a lot. Um, you get a lot of cool trophies, you know, wallies and, and track trophies and things, and they're awesome. I love them, but you know, they, you don't get a lot of, a lot of uh, motorcycle trophies. So I, you know, I don't even, have, I've been racing motorcycles since 1978, and I don't think I have more than a half a dozen trophies with motorcycles on them. And that's so something. to me, that's really, really cool. It sure is. Yeah, and this is a beautiful trophy. Pops and those guys, I appreciate everything they did. They're great guys to race with, and it's a really fun event. I hope we can get, you know, more racers to come out. You know, there's a lot of great racers in Division 7. Yeah. And 
I'd love to have them all come out and make a bigger field. You know, they've got the Kingsmen that race out here at, at Fontana, and then they have the best bragger racers, you know, in the West Coast here in California. So I'd love to have them come out to these events, you know. Congratulations, man. It was a hard fought victory. I know you got the time ticket there. What was I the did. number there in the final? Oh, uh, you were 037. Wow. 037, yeah. And I was, had problems with competition, had clutch problems, we, I think. Yeah, something happened. He, he had a terrible reaction time, that, and I was able to let out of it at the end and took the stripe by a country mile. Awesome. And I want to make sure that, you know, uh, I'm on the APE race team, right? So I got AP on my bike. Yeah, who I else got, you want to thank here? AP, got, big thanks, Jay. Right, Helmet Center in Phoenix, Arizona. They're a uh, really nice group of guys. that uh, they actually more into road racing okay. and street bikes, but uh, they sponsor me. And then... Uh, I want to make sure I always mention Tombo. He's a good buddy of mine, and I buy parts from him. Shout out to Tombo. We love Tombo. He was supposed to be here. He couldn't make it, unfortunately, but he'll yeah, be yeah. at the next one. And then, of course, I want to mention Fuel Tech. Yes, yeah, Fuel I'm Tech. I'm a Fuel Tech dealer, West Coast motor Fuel Tech dealer for motorcycles and cars. And I had three funny bikes out here today that I had put Fuel Tech on that were all running in the sixes. Running great. Fuel Tech's a great product, great company. And, and uh, anybody looking for Fuel Tech, call me. What's the best way to get a hold of you? Facebook? Yeah, Facebook. Okay. Yeah, they can reach out to any, you know, anyone in, in the division probably might have my phone number. Or my Perfect. phone number is 602-448-2938. There you go. And you can reach me on Facebook, of course. And... Awesome, Tyler. Well, congratulations, guys. He gave you some good secrets. And if you need any information about Fuel Tech, look them up. Give them a call.